Can you actually build muscle with resistance bands? What's up guys, welcome to Baseline Barbell. My name is Nate, I'm a student physical therapist, and today we're gonna to be talking about resistance bands and whether or not we can actually build muscle with them. A couple weeks ago, I reviewed a resistance band product and bashed the science behind the marketing of it. The product claims that it can build muscle three times faster than free weights. I went through all the research provided on the website to prove that there was absolutely no basis for this claim. But does that mean resistance bands can't build muscle at all? They may not be able to build it three times faster, but can they build it comparably well to free weights? Let's talk about it. Before we jump in, don't forget to hit that like button down below. It really helps out the channel and allows more people to see our videos. So first of all, what do we need to grow muscles? The process of muscle growth is known as hypertrophy, and there are three main mechanisms for hypertrophy, with some having more evidence to support them than others. The three mechanisms are mechanical tension, muscle damage, and metabolic stress. Mechanical tension is just what it sounds like. It's the process of loading the muscle in some way and creating tension. Over time, we wanna slowly increase the tension that we put on the muscle because it will adapt to the loads that we put on it. This is known as progressive overload. Out of the three mechanisms for muscle growth, mechanical tension is by far the most well-established and clearly the biggest contributor. Muscle damage is the second mechanism, and muscle damage just refers to the small muscle fiber tears that sometimes occur when lifting weights. They are more associated with the eccentric part of lifting, which is when your muscle is lengthening under tension. And there's less established evidence for muscle damage being a large contributor for muscle hypertrophy, but it is theorized to be at least part of the story. And finally, we have metabolic stress. So metabolic stress refers to when your muscles get really low on energy, which leads to the accumulation of things called metabolites. And metabolic stress is most often seen when you chase the pump and perform tons of reps over and over until the muscle is pumped up and exhausted. According to the research, metabolic stress doesn't appear to be essential for muscle growth, but it can have a strong added muscle building benefit when combined with the other two mechanisms. So what does all this have to do with resistance bands? Well, in order to decide whether resistance bands can be effective at building muscle, we should probably see how well it fits into our mechanisms of muscle growth. So let's start with mechanical tension. Resistance bands certainly offer a form of mechanical tension. It's not caused by the force of gravity like we see with free weights, but they do offer a mechanism for loading our muscles through the elastic properties of the bands. So right off the bat, it looks like they pass the mechanical tension test. The one thing that can be difficult with resistance bands as compared to free weights is progressive overload. So this is one huge advantage that we get with free weights. We know exactly how much tension we're applying each time through the number on the weights. And we can track this very easily and bump up the numbers as needed. This is a little more difficult with bands because we can't necessarily quantify the tension each time. Holding the band slightly further from the anchor could result in a huge drop in tension that we may not even be aware of. In my opinion, this is the hardest part about working out with resistance bands. But I don't think this is a huge deal breaker, and I think that as long as you're progressing through the bands over a longer period of time, the slight differences in day-to-day -day tensions are probably pretty negligible. So what about our second mechanism, muscle damage? Unlike mechanical tension, I think there's actually an advantage to using resistance bands for creating muscle damage. Unlike free weights, the tension on a band increases as you move through the range. So this means that you have peak tension when the muscle is fully contracted. Like we said earlier, muscle damage is highly correlated to the lowering portion of the rep, and having peak tension just before this lowering portion may provide some extra benefit to muscle damage. One study published in the Journal of Sports Science and Medicine actually looked at this and found that elastic bands lead to significant muscle damage that was comparable to cable machines. The study concluded that elastic training is a viable mode of resistance exercise that can provide a training stimulus that's greater than where we usually see them utilized in a rehabilitation setting. Finally, let's look at metabolic stress. One way to infer metabolic stress is through muscle activation. So having a really strong activation often leads to a really great pump, which we know is where we see the highest amount of metabolic stress. A 2018 study set out to find the difference in muscle activation between resistance bands and free weights. Some muscles were activated slightly less with resistance bands than free weights, but others were activated much more. 
The study concluded that elastic resistance bands can be considered a feasible alternative to dumbbells in the exercises that were tested. And again, while this isn't a direct measure of metabolic stress, I think it's a fair proxy to use and assume that we're getting really high levels of metabolic stress when we're doing lots of reps with good muscle activation. I think this is just one of those things that comes down to the individual and how well they can activate muscles based on their own anatomy. Personally, I found resistance bands to be one of, if not the most effective way to induce a pump in my own muscles. And this may not be true for everyone, but I found that I can get a really good <laughs> I don't even know what that was. And this may not be true for everyone, but I found that I can generally get a really good contraction on every rep with resistance bands, which I can infer leads to good metabolic stress. So what's the conclusion on resistance bands? Well, I think that if you can overcome the challenge of progressive overload, they are a fantastic option, especially for people who want to get into resistance training or don't want to go to or pay for a gym membership. I think they're a really underrated tool for building muscle, and I think they're just gonna get more and more popular as people start to realize that they can be used for more than rehab and physical therapy. If you guys are interested, we've actually put together a full resistance band workout program that I've been using for quite some time since quarantine, and it's on our website. You can download it at baselinebarbell.com. And if you're interested, I'll also link down the resistance bands that I got from Amazon. So that's all for today, guys. Don't forget to drop a like down below. It really helps out the channel. And subscribe so you don't miss any of our weekly uploads. Head on over to BaselineBarbell.com to download that resistance band program or get our free at-home workout plan. And we'll see you next week.